Okay, excellent. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Somatic Movement. It's my once a month Saturday morning class, or in California, it's morning. And our theme today are the arms. So the arms, uh, the arms start at the shoulder. You've got your upper arm, your elbow, your forearm, your wrist, your hand, your fingers. We'll get a little bit into fingers. They'll be part of some movements, but it's, it's, it's about arms. And you'll need a chair. We're going to start in a chair and see some pictures and do a little bit of movement in the chair. And you'll need some pillows, substantial pillows, and uh, probably, and um, of course, your floor pad or floor mat, because after the opening, whoops, I better mute everybody. Okay, let me go. I do that through participants list. Okay. I don't know why I space that out. I you see. all, you all. Okay, now that shouldn't happen. And um, uh, so, okay, so our usual somatic guidelines, I always like to review these so that you keep them in mind. We are moving slowly with awareness to develop more awareness of neuromuscular control, balance, movement freedom, and movement function. Please back away from pain or discomfort. That means you do less, you go smaller, or you may just have to observe that move um, and follow any medical directives that you have. Okay, I am gonna go into screen share and we are gonna follow Oops, I have it on the wrong, oh well, I have it on the wrong picture, but we'll come to that picture. <laughs> okay, let me minimize certain things so I can see. Okay, so this is just announcing that this is the somatic movement class. And our guiding principle, our guiding principle is always uh, our guiding principle, but our limbs, that means our arms and our legs, sometimes they're called upper extremities and lower extremities, need the foundational movement, support, and control of our spine and trunk to fully function, to function with least effort, coordination, and grace. Remember, our brain organizes us as a whole, our spine and trunk want to be long. We want to begin long. Of course, we're going to move, and that's going to shorten certain parts and lengthen other parts. But overall, you're looking for, uh, especially in an, in an opening alignment, you're looking for spine and trunk nice and long, and our shoulder and pelvic girdles want to be broad. Last class, some of you were in, some of you were not. We really worked with the shoulder girdle. That means the scapula or shoulder blades. This is the scapula. This is a posterior or back view scapula. Here are your scapulas. The clavicles, here's the clavicle. And here's your other clavicle. This shows one clavicle. And your shoulder joint itself. Most books define the shoulder girdle as the scapula or shoulder blade, the clavicle and the shoulder joint. I like to include the humerus, but obviously this upper arm bone, the humerus is also a major part of the, uh, is part of the arm, the upper arm. So today we are going to be working with the arm, the whole arm. And so here's the shoulder girdle, clavicle, scapula, shoulder joint. Now here's the upper arm, the humerus bone. And at one end you have the shoulder and at the other end you have the elbow. This, the back of your arm, back of your elbow is the big pointed part of your elbow. And coming back to the front picture, if you come down your forearm down the thumb side of your forearm, this is your radial bone. And if you come down your baby finger side, this is your ulnar bone. And so the right below the elbow, this forearm moves and it rotates and we're gonna be moving it a lot. 
and the, there's it, it's a complicated sen, set of joints. Here's the joint of the forearm with the elbow. It joins with the radius and the ulna, and the radius and ulna between them have a joint. And then there's a membrane between the two bones, which keep the two bones in relationship to each other. And then you have a joint between the radius and ulna right here. And then you have the bottom of the radius is really considered more the rest, wrist joint with the carpal bones of the hand. These little bones in the hand, the carpal bones, the carpal bones drive the car. The tarsal bones in the foot walk on the tar. And then there's so there's two bones in the forearm, and then you have, I believe, eight carpal bones, and you have two phalanges in the thumb, and you have three phalanges or three bones in the rest of the fingers or digits. Let's, I'm going to come out of screen share. We're going to be working with some basic movements, and you can just follow along with me. And tell me, make sure my, um, my, my sound comes with me. And so we're going to start with the shoulder joint. And we're not doing this pendicularly, which is slower. We're just going to do it as, as a flowing motion. And so just come along with me. We're going to combine it with some arching and some very gentle, mild curling. So with your arms down or as down as they can be, we're gonna start and just follow along as you can. Flexion, this is flexion of the arm at the shoulder, extension of the arm at the shoulder. I'm folding a little bit into a curl. Inhale, arch, flexion of the arms at the joint, extension of the arms at the shoulder. And so this is flexion, this is extension. It's close, the limbs stay close into the body. And then we have abduction. You can go high, but you don't have to go high. And adduction, adding the arms to the body. Abduction, abandoning the arms. Adduction, adding the arms. Abduction, abandoning the arms. And then we have rotation. We are rotating our arms outward. The shoulders usually go backward. The shoulder blades come close together. Our whole arms, including that upper arm, not just bending from the forearms. The humerus bone, the upper arm bone needs to rotate. And then internal rotation and we'll add, we'll, we'll exaggerate it a little bit with an arch and opening out, palms open, external rotation. Internal rotation of the arm. This is all at the shoulder with scapula helping it. External rotation of the arm and relax. And then there are two additional movements that are often listed in books and they're called, and I'm gonna start in this position. They're called, you bring your arms to shoulder height. And if you can't do that because it hurts, you can go lower. But traditionally your arms would come to shoulder height I'm going to fold my, I'm going to bend my elbows. And this is horizontal adduction. And this is horizontal abduction. Horizontal adduction. I'm adding a little curl. Horizontal abduction. I'm adding some arch. Horizontal adduction. Horizontal abduction. You can keep your arms straight. You won't go as far. And that's fine. Okay, so that's shoulder joint. Okay, now we come to the elbow. And the famous, everybody thinks of the famous biceps muscles and that's fine. There are different muscles. So I'm gonna start, I'll just show you my hands are facing backward. My palm, my, the back of my hands are facing forward. And I'm going to flex my elbow and extend my elbow. To flex the elbow is to shorten the angle of the joint. To extend the elbow is to straighten the elbow and flex and extension. Now, turn, your, uh, turn with your thumbs forward. So we're 
We started in this position and our forearms were in a certain position as we flexed and extended. Now we're gonna change that and we're gonna rotate the forearms thumbs up, but you don't have to hold the thumbs in contraction and flex the elbow, elbows, extend the elbows, flex the elbows. You can even continue and flex in the shoulders, extend the elbows. You can even continue and extend through the shoulders and flex the elbows, extend the elbows and relax. Now we come to the forearms and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna bring my hands higher. You can keep your hands in your lap if you want, but I want you to be able to see. With my palms down, this is the position of pronation. This comes through the forearm. And when you keep your wrist straight, it comes all the way from the elbow, right below the elbow, all the way through the hand, through the fingers. And this is to supinate or to externally rotate. This is to pronate, to internally ro rotate or pronate. This is supination. You can drink the soup. This is pronation, prone to the goddess. Supination, pronation. There's a lot of rotation. In fact, our hands can go where they want in and do what we want our hands to do because of all these joints, but it's often because we can, we can rotate our forearms so that our hands get into the correct positions that we want them. Now we come to the wrists. All right, now I broke both my wrists in 2015. Theoretically, I should be able to completely make a 90 degree angle between my forearm and my wrist. You can see my right, this is my right, which was crushed, was the worst of the broken wrists, uh, has a little less range of motion. I'm very functional, I can do everything I wanna do, but in terms of clinical range of motion, it's not quite what it probably was when I was younger, although I think I lost some range of motion along the way anyway. And then extension is to come back. Some people have quite a lot of extension, more than I have. I'm not sure, man, maybe they can even come 90 degrees back. So this is flexion of the wrist. I'm trying to put it, put my arms in a position where you can see them and extension of the wrist, flexion of the wrist, extension of the wrist, flexion of the wrist, extension of the wrist. I can be in many different positions because I've got flexibility in ways I can position my shoulder and upper arm, where, where, the ways I can bend and extend my elbow and the ways I can rotate my forearm to position my, my wrist. Now we also have, I'm gonna bring my hands this way so you can see them, but you're probably gonna wanna look at your hands and you can, I'm gonna hold one and you can bring your, uh, you have a little bit of movement side to side, side to side. When you go towards the thumb, that's called radial, based on the radial bone, radial deviation, ulnar deviation. In anatomical position, uh, radial deviation is adduction. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, ulnar deviation is adduction. Radial deviation is abduction, don't worry so much. What's important is that you gain or regain a little bit of side to side motion so you can do certain activities. Now, I'm gonna face my palm towards you, but look at your palm. There are lines, there are folds, and you can bring your eminences under the thumb and under the baby finger, you can bring them toward each other look at it, it folds your hand, I'm not talking about your fingers, your fingers may move, but I'm talking about your hand will fold in and open out and it follows the folds. It follows the folds. So your hands can become closer and farther apart. Now your fingers, 
when you make a fist, make a soft fist, your fingers are flexed. Now, when you open out, your fingers are extended. Flexion of the fingers, extension of the fingers, flexion, extension, adduction, you come towards the middle finger, abduction, adduction, abduction. And oh, and opposition, sorry, opposition. Opposition is where you take your thumb and you bring it to the pad of each finger. And there's, there's some variations in this. This is a really good exercise that they give you in physical therapy when you've broken fingers, wrists, things like that. And then a more challenging one is to bring your thumb pad to the base of each finger. I can kind of do it. I can do it to my baby finger. I sort of do it to my uh, ring finger pretty well. I fudge. I have to, if I really bring my middle finger forward, I can do it. My, my index finger, it's a kind of a fudge. But those are the movements of all the different joints, the basic movements of the upper arm, of the upper, upper limb, and the fundamental movements. Okay, let's go back to screen share. <clears throat> okay, so we just went through these movements. I showed this slide last time, I'm not gonna hang out here, but our arms, our shoulders, our shoulder girdles, our shoulder blades, and the whole body needs to be integrated to move. And our hands are the companion of our mind. We do so much with our hands. Our hands and arms need to stay integrated with the whole self. Then we can use our arms and hands to manipulate tools express, manipulate tools like a camera, like cooking, like gardening, then um, express ourselves in love, express ourselves in other ways, and perceive our world. So we use our hands all the time, but they're connected to the whole upper extremity. Our posture wants to be are aligned and long. Look at this, she's 13 years old. Look how long, long neck. Look how nice and long she is. Look at the broadness in her chest. You can visualize her shoulders are back and she's doing, some, doing something with a long pole here and something here. Long back, long and aligned, shoulders back. There's an ease in her posture and her expression. There's an ease. And now we come to this American nurse. Look how her upper body is so far behind her lower body. And her head is forward of her chest. Her shoulders are more forward because of the posture of her arms. There's this kind of out of alignment posture from which we can move. And there's this kind of aligned posture from which we can move. The slumping posture in sitting instead of a nice straight aligned posture. Here's a very overarched hyperextended back, hyperextended knees pushed back. Her shoulders are back, but they're back because her upper back is narrow and her cho cho chest is broader. She's out of balance uh, front to back and her pelvis is anterior tilted and her rib cage is posterior tilted. It's tilted up. So posture is important. And we have muscles. We got a lot of muscles all over the body and in the upper extremity. I just wanna show you uh, good old Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> and I don't know her name, and here's Barbie. We've got bodybuilding Barbie even, but it's fun to look at bodybuilding pictures once you start learning anatomy to see if you can identify muscles. So here's this big biceps, and here's the deltoid, and it doesn't matter. We're not going to go into it, but bald bodybuilding pictures, I don't know. I just find them kind of fascinating. And then the last picture I'm going to show today is Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, only backward and in high heels. 
And I just want to have you look at the sense of integration of their arms and legs with their spine and their trunk and the grace that they have in movement. Their arms are coming out of their whole body. Their legs are integrated and coming out of their whole body. They're long. They're long, even though they're in different positions, they're long. The, the chest is staying broad. The upper back is staying broad. And with that, I'm going to stop the screen share and go ahead now and lie down on the floor. Uh, let yourself come into comfort. And we'll go into our soma scan, our body scan. Soma is the word Tom Hanna used. It means your living, experiencing self, your whole self. So get yourself comfortable, legs and arms comfortable, however you want them to be. And today we'll do a short body scan because of time. And there's always so much I want to do. So legs straight or bent, we're going to start with just basic breathing. And as you breathe, as you inhale, and as you exhale, let the inhale take you into a very gentle arching of the back where you're rolling a little bit towards your tailbone. And as you exhale, let it take your lower back flatter and longer and your pelvis rolls so your pubic bone comes more up towards your chest. And let your breath take you in, let your inhale take you into a gentle arch, let your exhales take you into a gentle flatten. Breathe your movement. Instead of placing your movement, breathe your movement, do it organically. And now begin to breathe movement into your arms so that when you inhale, the breathing not only helps you arch, but you're externally rotating your arms somewhat. And as you internally, as you exhale and flatten, you're internally rotating your arms. You may have to add a little more oomph to the movement, but breathe your arms and your spine and trunk into movement. When you inhale, your arms externally rotate or rotate outward. And when you exhale and flatten, they roll inward. Doesn't have to be big. Just breathe them into movement. And whether your legs are straight or bent, you can breathe rotation into your legs. If your legs are bent, as you inhale, your knees can go out a little bit. And as you exhale, your knees can come in a little bit if your legs are long. As you inhale, your legs roll a little outward. And as you exhale, your legs roll a little inward. It can be very subtle. Breathe your rotation into your legs. And come to quiet and rest. Okay. Now we are going to play a magical fiddle with our arms. So just come along with me. Remember your spine and your trunk support the movement, support and organize foundationally the movement you're going to be doing with your arms. So the, we're going to be playing the fiddle and our, take your left arm and you're going to very gently bring your left arm a little bit forward and a little bit over your body like your hand is pointing maybe towards your right foot a little bit. And it's your arm is a little bit up from your body. And you're going to take your right arm, bend the elbow and place your right hand, the palm of your right hand on top of your left wrist. And you're going to play your left arm and you're going to bring your arm long and your elbow will straighten more and then bring your 
arm back and your elbow will bend and play your right hand over your left. And as you play and lengthen your right arm over your wrist, internally rotate a little bit as you lengthen and externally rotate as you come back and periodically open up that elbow into extension backward and then come back to smaller movements, bend your palm, put it between your wrist and your elbow and play your left arm and reach gently. And as you pull back and use your whole body to play the fiddle. So notice your head may be rolling, your chest may be rolling, it with internal rotation as you lengthen your right arm it's going to roll left if you're using your right arm and then it, your chest may rotate out a little bit and then play over your elbow and let your right arm play over your elbow and reach and maybe internally rotate and come back and now play above your elbow and let your elbow bend and come back. And now play a more higher towards your clavicle if you can. Anytime you're lost, you're welcome to look at the screen and then just gently with a few strokes, play back down your right arm. Okay, let's change our hand position. Your left arm is still the fiddle. But now this fiddle is magical and it not only has strings on top of it, but it has strings below it, or you've turned your fiddle over and now bring the back of your hand under your, bring the back of your right hand under your left wrist. And now play the fiddle, your right arm is the bow under your left arm and lengthen your right arm and pull back and bend your elbow and then go a little bit higher and lengthen and pull back and now come a little closer to the elbow. You can stay in one place. Do not go any higher than is comfortable. Play with your whole body. Your rib cage is moving, your somatic center is moving. It's going to feel a little different in your lower body um, if you are having your legs bent or legs straight, but you can do either. But you're playing, your head is rolling with your whole body and rest. Now, Let's change positions. And I'm gonna do some things a little bit differently with your other side. <clears throat> if you're, you can be with other, whatever arm you're on. Now my right arm is gonna be my fiddle. So it's gonna come a little bit above my body and a little bit over my body. And now my left hand is gonna play, but I'm gonna play, well, I'm gonna play it from my pinky instead of the flat of my hand over, over my right wrist, I'm going to bring the pinky of my right hand onto my right wrist. And now I'm going to play with the bow of my left hand and I'm going to lengthen with my hand in this position. My, and as I reach with my pinky, I still may want to internally rotate and externally rotate my left arm. And as I bow back and forth, play with your whole body, move up your right arm so that you start to come closer to your elbow. And then if you can reach with comfort above your elbow, your whole body is playing. Your whole body is playing. And now rest. And we're gonna continue with our right arm being the fiddle and our left arm being the bow. Only this time we're gonna bring our thumb, our left thumb under our right wrist. And we're gonna play from this position. So you're going to reach along with your left and then pull back and bend and fiddle from underneath your right arm and use your whole body. Use your whole body. Now, when you get your thumb back somewhere on your right arm, stiffen your spine and trunk. Let it be stiff. 
and just bow with your arm, just bow with your left arm. Let you're not turning your rib cage, you're not turning your head, you're not moving your spine. There may be a little fight and feel how stiff and how less movement you have, less grace you have, maybe more pain, be careful. Now play again, fiddle with your thumb underneath your right arm as the fiddle. Play with your whole body, feel the freedom that happens. Come up to the elbow if you can, come up above the elbow if you can, come all the way to your armpit if you can, come down your arm in a stroke or two and rest. And give yourself a moment to experience the results of the movement. Okay. Let's turn on to our bellies. And if you can't turn on to your belly, um, you can, you are welcome to watch. If you can translate into lying on your back, that's fine. And starting with one hand over the other, excuse me, one hand over the other with your forehand, forehead on the back of your hand. Here is how we are going to extend our spine. Just, your, your hands are gonna stay on the floor. Just bring your uh, head and your nose maybe not more than an inch above your hands. Your neck, the back of your neck is gonna stay long and you're gonna extend your spine by bringing the top of your crown forward, much more forward and hardly up at all. So you wanna keep your eyes more down toward the floor and see if you can extend long through your spine. And then you come back and relax and inhale and extend long through the crown of your head, the top of your head, so that you're not hyperextending your neck. It's just a different extension. It's like you are standing up and you're getting tall, not standing up and tipping your head back, but you're getting, you, your head might tip back some, but you're going long in your spine. You're going long in your spine. It's a different feel and see if you can do it and keep your neck, the back of your neck relatively long. In fact, the front of your neck will be long too. It's just another kind of variation. Okay, bring your right arm down by your side. And if it's comfortable for you, turn your head to the right. Your left hand can be either down at your side. You can leave it under your head if you want, or you can just leave your left arm bent and put your palm on the left palm on the floor. And what you're going to do is this time, there'll be a little bit more arching in the spine and the neck, but don't overdo that. What you're gonna do as you inhale, you're going to extend your spine long, turn your face to the right, turn your rib cage to the right and extend your right arm behind you in extension and then slowly come down as you exhale. Inhale, extend the spine face to the right, turn your rib cage to the right, bring your right arm backward behind you and slowly come down. Now this time we're gonna add the left leg. If you've been in classes before and, and know how to organize your lower body so your left leg is longer, that's fine. And if you don't know that, that's fine too. This time it's gonna be a contralateral movement, meaning your right arm is gonna go backward and your left leg is gonna go backward. You're gonna do the best you can to organize it in comfort. You're going to inhale, lengthen through your spine, turn your rib cage to the right, extend your right arm and left leg gently backward and off the floor, and then slowly come back down. And go ahead 
and do that. So this is pendicular, meaning slower. And this time, go ahead and do that again. Inhale, arch, long spine. Turn your face right if it's not already right. Rib cage right, right arm extends backward. Left leg extends backward. And relax. And you're going to switch positions. <clears throat> if it's not easy for you to turn your head, you can start with your head in the center. But if you can turn your face to the left, then turn your face to the left. Left arm is down. Right arm can be down or right arm can be bent for comfort. And you're going to inhale. You're going to extend long in the head, turn your rib cage to the left, extend your left arm backward behind you and slowly come back down. And you're going to do that again. The trunk, in this case, especially the rib cage and some of the somatic center is really supporting that left arm to be able to extend backward. Inhale, extend your spine face to the left. It'll also lift some. Your rib cage turns left, your head may lift higher. Your left arm extends behind you and come back on an exhale slowly to the floor. Let's add the right leg, left arm, right leg. It's a contralateral movement. Inhale, extend through the spine. Lift your, lift your head some, turn your face to the left, turn your rib cage left. Left arm extends behind you and toward the ceiling. Right leg extends toward the ceiling. And slowly come down. Again, if you know how to organize your lower body in a more sophisticated way, that's fine. But you can just do the move one more time. Inhale, extend the spine, face is left or turns left. May your face, your head may lift more. Your rib cage turning left may help it turn more. Your left arm extends behind you toward the ceiling as does your right leg. And slowly come down. And when you are back down to the floor, turn over onto your back and rest. <clears throat> Often at this point, I would integrate with a diagonal arch and curl, but I'm gonna lead you through more of a diagonal arch and flatten. <clears throat> and it may turn into a diagonal arch and curl. So bend your knees and bring your, your left hand is down at your side. Um, your right hand is behind your head. And this is where you want a pillow under your right upper arm and elbow so that your, 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 upper arm and elbow can absolutely rest in comfort. And it may even have room to press down. So if you pillow yourself enough under your upper right arm, you'll be able to seek the true support. And when you have true support, your, your body can actually actually rest. Your shoulder girdle will actually be able to rest into support. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to adjust as you need to. You're going to turn your face, before we even start, turn your face a little bit to the right. And as you inhale and gently arch, if you can press your right elbow backward into the pillow or the floor. And as you exhale, Start bringing your elbow towards your face, turn your face more to the left, point your elbow, which is closer to your face, to the left, and then come back to your neutral position. And we're going to repeat that. 
You're kind of doing a rolling arch and flatten in the upper body. You're going to turn your face a little bit right to start it off. You're going to inhale and arch face right. Your right elbow and arm go backward. Your, your chest turns a little bit right. And as you exhale and go into flatten, now you're gonna roll the opposite direction. Let your upper arm come closer to your face. Let your face and elbow turn left. Your right shoulder will lift a little bit and come back and you can, if you need to rest your arm, you can rest your arm. If you have support, you can probably just rest it on there. Now we're gonna combine that with what's gonna happen in the lower body. So you're going to um, actually maybe lengthen your right leg. So just your left leg is bent. It may be easier to feel what's happening in your left bent leg is your active leg. Again, this is contralateral. And what you're going to do, turn your face to the right as you inhale, and you are turning your upper body and face to the right and your right elbow is going into the pillow or floor, gently bring your left leg outward, your left knee outward. And you are long between your right shoulder and your left hip. You can take your, the fingers of your left hand and draw a diagonal from your right shoulder to your left hip or upper part of your thigh area and feel the length. And then I hope you will continue to breathe, inhale to exhale. And as you exhale, start bringing your left knee inward, letting your foot roll on the floor and start to turn your face, your chest, your elbow to the left. Your knee is going right, your Left hemipelvis may, may be lifting, it's at least lighter. And you're rolling more onto your left shoulder as your right shoulder lifts to turn you to the left and come back to center. And let's do that again. Inhale, face to the right, right elbow into the floor, left knee goes out, you are long in your front diagonal between your right shoulder and your left hip. Exhale, flatten your back, turn your upper body left and your lower body to the right. Come back to center, let everything relax, let your arms come down. And let's do that with the other side. It's kind of a rolling arch and flatten on the diagonal. Left, now change your support to come under your left upper arm. You really want enough support that you can not only totally rest your left bent arm on your pillow, but you can actually, as you arch, you can actually have a little room to press your elbow down if that's possible. Okay, you're going to inhale. And as you arch, you're gonna rotate your upper body face to the left, chest to the left, left elbow goes into the floor a little bit. And as you exhale, now your upper body is gonna flatten and roll to the right and your elbow comes closer to your face and your head is going to turn and come back to your neutral briefly. Find an inhale, inhale, arch, upper body turns left, face left, chest left, elbow it goes into the floor to help the arch. Exhale, a rolling curl as you flatten, your upper body is rolling a little bit right, your face is right, your chest is right, your elbow is right, and your upper arm is closer to your head. Doesn't have to be touching at all. And come back to your neutral. Let's add the lower body. Straighten your left leg, bend your right leg. So now, as you get ready, face a little bit left. 
Inhale, arch, upper body to the left, left elbow into the pillow or floor, right knee outward. Now you're long on the diagonal. Your right fingers can even trace the line from your left shoulder across your body to your right hip or inner groin area. You're long, it's the long diagonal. Now the short diagonal will happen as we reverse this. Find an exhale, inhale to exhale. Your knee will come inward, your upper body, your, you'll flatten, your knee comes inward, your upper body rolls to the right, your elbow comes in closer to your face, your face to the right, your knee to the left. The line between your left shoulder and your right hip is now the short diagonal. Find an inhale, inhale, rolling arch and flatten upper body left, lower body right. You've got the long diagonal between your left shoulder, right hip. Find an exhale, flatten your back, roll your upper body right and your lower body left. Come back to neutral and rest. Okay. Now you're going to turn onto one side. You get to choose which side. You can either use your bottom arm as a pillow or put a pillow under your head, whichever is your preference. I tend to put a pillow under my head, but I can also use my arm if I feel like it. Your knees are bent in a chair position. Your top arm is draped along your side, the side facing the ceiling. And you're going to, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do our, a lateral, our, we're modifying our lateral flexion. We're gonna do our regular lateral flexion, but in our arms, we're gonna focus more on adduction and abduction. And I'll take you through it. So your knees are bent comfortably, your arm is long. You're going, you can breathe however you wanna breathe. You're going to um, gently bring your top armpit down a little bit, that arm will get long. You're gonna bring your hip up by keeping your knees together and bringing your top foot up. So you're laterally flexing and gently press your top arm into your side. You're, addu you're already adducted in this position, but now you're adducting it a little bit more. And then slowly release to your neutral. Now, you're going to be doing that move. Uh, you're, you're going to be doing the lateral flexion part of that move with the part of your body against the floor. So what will help you is get ready to take your top arm. You're going to abduct it. You're going to keep it on its side position and you're going to start to bring your top arm so that your finger, your arm is long and your fingers start pointing toward the ceiling and your ribs on the top side are opening up and your armpit and your hip on the top side are going away from each other and you're side bending the bottom side of your body and your, your arm is more up toward the ceiling, fingers toward the ceiling, if you can take it into a full abduction, like your arm is straight up. And then slowly come down, pendicularly coming out of abduction. Now your top side is going to laterally flex. Bring your armpit down, your hip up, squeeze your top arm tighter against your body. As you release, now 
you're going to start abducting your arm as the bottom side of your body laterally flexes. The top side of your body, your arm is gently reaching for the ceiling and your, your armpit and your hip are coming away from each other. Your ribs on the top side are opening. The ribs on the bottom side are closing and slowly come back down, releasing out of abduction into resting length. Let's do it. I think that was twice. Let's do it one more time. You're going to do our regular lateral flexion, knees together, top foot up to hike your hip, armpit down. S gently squeeze your top arm even more into your body. Adduction. And then as you release, you're reversing the movement. Your arm is going to abduct your fingers toward the ceiling. Your ribs on the top side are opening up. Your armpit and hip are longer coming away from each other. The um, bottom side ribs are contracting and your short side is the bottom side. And slowly release and relax. Releasing out of abduction and turn over onto your other side. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. Your top arm is long on your side. You're gonna come into our regular lateral flexion, knees together, top foot up to hike your hip, armpit down. Your top arm is long. As you slowly release through your two neutral, through your neutral, you're reversing. And now your bottom side is shortening as you start raising your top arm up toward the ceiling, abduction, your upper side body, the ribs are opening up, the space between the armpit and the hip are long. Slowly come down, out of abduction into resting length. And again, Shorten your top side, armpit down, hip up by raising your top foot, your top rib squeeze. Take your top arm and press it even more against your body, a little bit more adduction. Slowly release out of that and transition. Your top arm is going to abduct. Your straight arm is going to come up from your side toward the ceiling. You're opening up the armpit and hip on the top side as you're laterally flexing the side on the floor, your ribs on the floor side are getting closer together. And slowly come back down, coming out of abduction slowly, letting those muscles eccentrically lengthen. To relaxation one more time. Laterally flex the top side, armpit down, hip up by raising your top foot, press your straight top arm into your side of your body, adduction, slowly release, coming through neutral and now reverse, bring your top arm, start to bring it into ab. Reduction, feel your trunk and spine, organize what they have to do. The lateral flexion is now on the floor side. The top side ribs open up. Your armpit and hip on the top side are coming further apart. And slowly release and relax. and turn back over onto your back.
and rest. Okay, your legs can be long or your legs can be bent, but we're going to be screwing a jar top on and off. So you're gonna pretend that you're, and we'll, I'm, I'm orienting it to a dominant right hand first, but then we'll switch to the left hand. <clears throat> so we're gonna be doing it with both sides. So you're going to pretend your left hand is holding a jar. So bend your left elbow and the top of the jar has a lid and that lid is facing your face. And the long part of the jar is, is more or less against your body, but you're gonna probably wanna lift your jar a little bit away from your body. And your right hand is gonna take, so it's like the back of your right hand is under your chin, but on your jar. And now your right hand is going to, you're gonna put your right hand around the top of that jar and you are going to screw on the top, which is clockwise. You're screwing on the top of the jar. And so your hand, your right hand is, 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 is going side to side towards your pinky and then it has to come back to an, a beginning position and, and your, your arm is moving a little bit and notice that there's subtle movements in your spine. Notice, pretend you really wanna get that, well, be careful, you wanna get that jar top really tight. So as you tighten and turn the jar top clockwise, really make it tight and notice that it hikes your right hip, it laterally flexes you to the right and then come back to neutral. Now, this time, just pretend you're starting with the jar again. You just wanna screw the top on gently. So you're, you're going to have, you don't want your spine and trunk to be stiff, but it's not gonna have a huge movement, but there's flow in your body. There's flow through your arm. There's flow through your elbow and through your hands. Now, unscrew the jar. Now, as you unscrew counterclockwise, counterclockwise, now you're going more towards the thumb side of your hand, and then you come back to a position where you can, uh, un, uh, that you can, um, let's see, this was screwing, un, un, okay, I got mixed up, screwing it, unscrewing it. We're unscrewing the jar, and our hand at our wrist is going more side to side and our fingers may be curled a little around the jar and there's subtle movements in your spine. Now hold your spine stiff, hold your trunk stiff, absolutely stiff, no movement in your rib cage, somatic center or pelvis and screw and unscrew your jar. And now, let your spine just relax and trunk relax. And now screw and unscrew. It's not that there's huge movements, but there's a flow. There's a, an ability of the movement to go through your body and relax your arms. Let's reverse, hold the jar with your right hand the long part of the jar is basically parallel to your body, kind of in front of your chest. Your left hand is on top of the jar lid. The, your, the back of your hand is sort of facing your chin, but of course it's a little lower. And your fingers have grasped the lid and you're, you're going to clockwise, you're gonna unscrew. Now, for me, this is my non-dominant way of doing it and it feels really weird. So it depends if you're right-handed or left-handed and which way you screw and unscrew jars, how it's going to feel. But I'm going to go uh, clockwise. Now my left thumb is coming more to the side and I'm letting subtle movement happen through my arm, through my wrist, through my elbow, through my shoulder, through my spine, through my rib cage, through my somatic center, through my pelvis. It's not that it's huge, but it's there. 
and now screw on. Um, that was unscrewing, screw now counterclockwise. And now your, uh, left, or your left wrist is going more side to side towards your baby finger. And then of course you have to bring your hand back in position to continue the process of uh, unscrewing, unscrewing. And again, it's not that the movement is huge in the spine and trunk, but it's there to support you. You are not stiff. You are dancing with your jar and relax. Okay. I have to figure out what I'm going to cut out, <laughs> which is always kind of fun. All right, let's come back onto our backs and let's go into the twist. We're going to do the twist, but we're going to do it with a little bit of modification. Bend your knees and bring your arms on the floor out from your shoulders. If that's too much, you can bring your hands lower on the floor. But I'm going to have you take your arms and bring them a little bit off the floor. If they get tired, they can go back on the floor and bring them a little bit more in, in front, not totally in front of you, but lift them up and bring them a little bit more inward so that you might even want to be able to see your arms. You might want to open your eyes and see your arms and notice, let your Right arm turn outward, let your head turn to the right, let your left arm turn inward, and now reverse that. So you're not exactly in this completely abducted position, but you're a little forward. And notice when your face turns to the right, your right arm turns outward, your left arm turns inward. And when your face turns to the left, your left arm turns outward, your right arm turns inward. Stay right there, bring your knees to the right. Now you're gonna reverse the pattern, knees to the left, face to the right. If your arms are tired, you can bring them down. Right arm turns outward, left arm turns inward. And then reverse, knees right, face left, left arm outward, right arm inward, and let your arms come down and rest. I just wanted you to notice and, and look at that because we're gonna do a variation on the twist that involves the four, more of the forearms and actually the shoulder blades, the scapulas. So with your arms on the floor, come out into the arms out of the shoulders on the floor, a little lower if that you need to. Bend your elbows, bring your fingers toward the ceiling, bring your palms toward each other. Now, take your face to the right, turn your right palm so it's more towards your face and your left palm more towards your bent knees. Now, turn your face left, your left forearm turns, palm more towards your face, right palm more towards your knees and gently go back and forth a little bit. So you're doing the upper body twist with rotation in the forearms and your shoulder, see if you can feel your shoulder blades. You may be able to feel your shoulder blades more. Now, the next time your face is to the right and your right palm is forward, bring your knees to the left. And now we'll go into the pattern, knees right, face left, left palm forward, right palm towards your knees. And see if you can now do the twist. We've done this before. But now, you're just focusing on the forearm, the, the forearms being able to rotate and rest. There are a lot of variations we could go into. That's the one we're going to do today. There's one more move we're going to do on the floor and we're gonna do a couple of moves in standing, I hope. <clears throat> Bend your knees. We're gonna combine this with arch and flatten. Take one of your, um, take your, your right arm, 
Take your arms. Okay, you're going to kind of make a, a W. You're just going to, your, your upper arms are going to stay relatively close to your upper body a little bit away and just bend your arms so that you're, you're all right, let me see how I want it. Sorry, let me just figure out. Okay, I want to change that. Uh, keep your upper arms by your body. Bend your elbow so your fingers are facing the ceiling and your palms are facing each other. All right. Now, turn both palms towards your face. Now, flex your wrists and try to turn your hands so your baby fingers are going towards the outside of your elbows. It's a flexion in the wrist and a turning of the hands and fingers. And slowly come back to your neutral where your palms are facing each other. Now, turn your palms towards your knees, flex your, flex your uh, wrists, and turn your hand and thumbs and finger, but your thumb will lead towards the outside of your elbows. This was a rehabilitation move that Eleanor Criswell Hannah taught me. It helped me so much when I broke my wrists. Okay, we're gonna combine it with a little bit of arch and flatten. Inhale, arch, palms towards your face. Now flex your wrist, turn, bring your pinkies towards the outside of your elbows. As you exhale and flatten, turn your palms towards your knees, flex your wrists, bring your thumbs towards the outside of your elbows. Inhale, arch. Turn your palms towards your face, flex your wrists, turn your pinkies towards the outside of your elbows. Exhale, flatten, turn your palms towards your knees, flex your wrists, bring your thumbs towards the outside of your elbows and relax. And just let your arms relax, but let your body continue to do a breathing arch and flatten. Let your inhales take you in, inhale, take you into a gentle arch, your exhale into a gentle flatten. And if you want to grow the movement with your breath so that your arms rotate, your legs rotate, that's fine. But let your breath at minimum, and this is one of my favorites, is just let your breath take you into the inhale, takes you into the arch rolling towards your tailbone. The exhale takes you into the flattened back. And rest. Believe it or not, I'm going to ask you to stand up. <laughs> so make your way. Some of you may have you. Some of you are very plastered to the floor. I understand that. But make your way to standing. And. Okay, we're going to do, I, I, this is a really nice one. I don't remember, we did it as kids. I don't remember when it, we might have done it. it Tom Hanna might have done this one, but um, I don't know really what to call it. Doesn't matter. You're going to bring your arms out in front of you, back of hand to back of hand. Now, take your right hand and bring it over your left. So now you're palm to palm. Interlace your fingers. If you cannot interlace your fingers in comfort, then just leave your wrists connected. And you're going to inhale and a standing arch. Exhale a little bit of a curl. Roll your arms in and bring your hands towards your chest. As you inhale and arch, straighten your elbows, reach your arms forward. Exhale, curl, roll your arm. You might have to look at the screen. Inhale, arch, lengthen out <clears throat> in front of you. Exhale, your elbows bend, your 
fists curl, your hands curl under and then come up to your heart and relax. I'm getting all the joints and I'm adding a little bit of arch and flatten just to get the spine and trunk in there. Okay, back of, we're gonna reverse back of hand to back of hand. Bring your left hand over your right hand. This is my non-dominant way of doing it. Interlace your fingers or just keep your wrists attached. Inhale, gentle arch, exhale, gentle curl, bend your elbows, your hands turn down and then towards your chest and they come in front of your chest. Inhale, arch, reach out. Exhale, curl, elbows out, bend your wrists down and into your heart. One more time. Inhale, arch reach out, exhale, curl gently, elbows out, wrists turn down, and then they turn towards your heart and then they come to your heart and relax. Shake out your arms. Lots of, lots of interesting action through the wrists, through the fingers through the elbows. Okay, now, <clears throat> I know you don't have this. I have a little light. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I thought it would be a little brighter. Now, this is <clears throat> a move that Thomas Hanna taught, it, taught us to integrate upper extremity. Pretend you have, I'm gonna start with my right, in my right palm. Pretend you have a burning candle in your right palm. So your right, your elbow is bent, your, got a candle in your uh, in your right palm all right now you've got to keep your candle lit and upright so it doesn't burn you and what you're going to do is you're going to turn your right arm in and then come back let your body dance with the move let your weight change just don't think too much about it but as you turn inward, my weight is going more into my right leg. And now it's coming more back to neutral. That's only the beginning. Now, the dance, that's just the start. Okay, now, what you're going to do is as you start turning your candle, you're going to bring it up, around, and back down. Okay, let me help you. It took me a while. You're going to keep the candle. The theory, I would burn myself. I'm, I'm using a light, um, but you can just put something in your hand. You don't have to use anything in your hand. And you're going to internal, your, your elbow's a little bit bent. Your, your, your palm is out. You're going to start to turn. Now, when you think you can't go any farther, you're going to come up. And as you come up, bring your arm in front of you and then bring your arm in front of your face. And over your head, you have to arch and come around and come around and back down. Let's do it with the other side. We're going to start. There's an external rotation too. Same idea, but let's try the other hand. So now I'm doing it with my non-dominant side because I'm right-handed. This is my left hand. Okay, you're holding your you're holding your lit candle, and you're the, started by just letting your arm internally rotate. Let your body dance with that move. As I internally rotate, my weight comes to my left leg more. And now as I come around, I think, I can't go, what can I do? I can't go any farther. Anytime you can't go farther, you go up, up. Now my hand starts coming in front of my chest, my face. I go around my head and back down. We'll do it again. Come around. When you think you can't go any farther, you go up and then your arm can go forward, can't go backward that well. And around, just know 
There is, no, there is a way to get out of whatever you think is stopping you. Okay, let's go back to the right hand. And now, instead of doing internal rotation to start, we're gonna do external rotation to start. So just start external rotation. Now, as I move, my weight is coming into my left leg, my right hand, and that's the start. And now up, 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 more behind and around my head and back down. External rotation, up, up, up behind me, around my head and back down. Let's go to the other side. This is fun. It's fun to practice it. It's fun to get it down. Took me a while. Okay, external rotation. How does my body want to dance? So I start getting in rhythm. I'm externally rotating. And when I feel I can't go any farther, I go up. And then I come around my head and back down. And I externally rotate. And when I can't go any farther, I go up and around and back down. And when I can't go any farther, I go up and around and back down. And stand for a moment. That's going to end our class today. Feel your height, feel your length, your spine and trunk want to be long, not long, hyperextended, long from the crown. <clears throat> your um, crown and the center of your pubic bone are in alignment. And actually, if you know what your uvula is in your mouth, the crown, the uvula, that little thing that sticks down and the center of your pelvic floor are in alignment. But you're, you're a, a relaxed alignment. Just walk around a little bit. You can go off camera. I know we're one or two minutes late. Just walk around a little to integrate the movements you've been doing. And that is officially going to end our class today. I will find a way to integrate some of the movements we didn't get to in future classes. I hope today was challenging as well as fun. And I'm going to now say goodbye, turn off the computer, but I'll stay on if anybody would like to chat. So.